Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the preview of another international tournament. Yes, we have the AFCON coming up very, very, very soon. It starts this Sunday, the 9th of January and it is played in Cameroon. Hence, I'm wearing Cameroon. Yeah, on the background there are a total of three Cameroon jerseys. This is my wife's. Uh, I, you know, Cameroon has always been, ever since the 1990 World Cup, my African team. So in that sense, I am actually quite uh, happy that Cameroon uh, is hosting it. So for, I finally get to see something of Cameroon in a way. Uh, however, the awarding of the tournament was is kind of also muddled in controversy, especially since, you know, it was basically a partner gift of Issa Hayatu. Uh, who was Cameroonian, the long-term time president of CAF that kind of helped Cameroon get the tour tournament and it had to be rescheduled. Uh, it was meant to be in 2019. Then, you know, uh, I suppose, uh, was it because of Ebola or whatever, something uh, it had to, uh, they couldn't host the tour tournament in that summer. So Egypt uh, got in, uh, Cameroon was then uh, about to host it uh, um, a year later. I think last year should have been posted to concurrently with the um, with the Euros, um, which ha is a whole other set of issues. Uh, the date I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, but yeah, due to COVID, it didn't happen last year. Now it's happening this year to the dismay of mostly Premier League fans, because to be honest, for me, the Fcon is one of my favorite tournaments out there. So why is the discontent there? Uh, the discontent is there because um, uh, of course the date January is right you know the hot part of the season especially in the Premier League who now rely more and more on African players and uh, for that reason I do somehow understand it however this has always been in the inter on the international calendar but I cannot say I mean I'm as a Milan fan I also I have my center midfield missing and on top of each other they play against each other and probably will injure each other in a direct tackle when Algeria play the Ivory Coast. So uh, I there is some concern there. However, I find it also a teeny bit uh, misplaced because there is also a little bit of this, uh, how, how to say, colonial attitude towards Africa swinging with it. And that's why a throwaway comment of Jurgen Klopp, who kind of uh, you know, a little bit, uh, kind of said, you know, we have this little tournament, the Africa Cup of Nations, and it was more or less uh, ironically uh, said it that, 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 that way. Uh, it was not meant dismissive, but there's already this defensive attitude. No, this is not a small tournament. It is not a small tournament. The AFCON uh, is, among all the international tour tournaments, probably my second favorite one. Uh, ahead of the Copa America, uh, a large part of its appeal is, of course, that I can watch it because it's in the same time zone. So that's num number one. Uh, and that puts it ahead of the Copa America. I absolutely fell in love with African soccer ever since Cameroon made this run. I'm not an expert in it, but at a World Cup, I usually uh, support almost all the L. I do support all the African teams. I really want them to do well. So uh, that's another part. Um, it's kind of a different culture, different vibe. I mean, uh, it's always, it's, um, you know, it's not a, such a well organized tournament. And I absolutely, there's a certain charm in that. I mean, who does not remember? I think it was in 2000. In 2013 or 2015, the helicopter at the semifinal between Equatorial Guinea and um, Ghana kind of uh, trying to hold the fans at bay. Uh, and every country, there's such a wide variety within Africa. I mean, the tournament in Egypt, when you saw the stadiums, it was all kind of a little bit in the desert, only in Alexandria. That was interesting as well. Uh, you know, I, 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 I remember the tournament uh, really well uh, that was hosted in Nigeria with the Nigeria Cameroon final. I think I want to say 2000. That was great. I, the first one I was, uh, was watched was uh, Burkina Faso, the one in Burkina Faso in 1998, where I really watched uh, extensively ever, ever since I've been trying to watch as much AFCON as possible. Uh, I just love it. 
I just love it because it gives you a different flavor of watching soccer. You have stadiums that are not shiny, blitzy. You have the, you know, the tribal rims, all those cool things that make Africa, Africa. Uh, and unfortunately, I have not been too often in Africa. Uh, I, 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 I would love to go more often, to be honest. I've been in Tunisia, I've been in South Africa, safeish places. Um, but uh, gives it a special vibe. Now, as for the date in January, I know that this is a big uh, problem. But to be honest, look at the climate map. If you were to play this in summer, you would actually exclude basically everything uh, north of Angola. Even maybe maybe goes because uh, the heat in summer. I mean, in Cameroon, probably uh, uh, along the equator, is a bit more. Uh, you know, you have more or less the same same weather. It's like a rainy season or dry season now. As far as I know, now it's the dry season. So I might be wrong there. Uh, so it makes makes it a little bit more palatable. But you know, uh, the games in Egypt, they were not great because it was freaking hot in there. Now, uh, that's the other thing, that's maybe the one downside of the AFCON is that usually the level of play, the, it's a very level tournament, much more level than the Euros, who well, I already think I very, very level. It's a very level tour tournament in many cases, which means that many players, uh, many, 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 many games kind of a pl fizzle out a little bit because teams no no neutralize each other. Very, very very well you don't have unfortunately anymore that you find a new star because you know all the stars are meanwhile known but the biggest argument for me to watch the afcon and a little bit here the background gives gives away of course the george uh, the jerseys and i'm gonna do a jersey review uh over the next two weeks where you get some afcon jerseys there are some really spectacular ones in there again uh african jerseys are just an entirely different thing to me but what i want to do in this tournament i mean i gave you just a few a little things to preview uh already i just remembered that the problem with cameroon hosting at the 2019 tournament was not uh a uh, an outbreak but it was actually that they couldn't finish uh their stadiums on time because there was corruption in building blah 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 i mean the political situation in cameroon is not great uh, there is a war between the Anglophone uh, parts that want to gain, like Ambazonia, it's called the Anglophone crisis, that want to get independent. So that is always a sour thing. And also, you know, uh, the president of Cam Cameroon, although democratic elected, is in uh, place already since 1982, already selecting Roger Miller for the 1990 World Cup famously so you know there are also a few things that also is this is on the second time that cameron hosted the afcon uh which is also a uh, remarkable myself because cameron is one of the most successful nations the second most successful behind egypt who are the other giants who have won seven times cameron has won it five times okay enough of a little bit backstory let's talk uh, about the tour tournament and of course we have the following groups they groups uh in the tournament uh hosts cameroon are of course in group a and if you look at these i gave you little bars on the left that's basically is a mixture of the fifa and the elo ratings to kind of give you an idea how strong these teams are i have not put a home field advantage on cameroon there which is substantial i think cameroon has not lost a competitive match at home since 1973 or something something like that like that there's also which i did not uh when we go better next uh in there always a little bit you know the north african uh, countries perform better when the tournaments play in north africa whereas the sub-saharan countries are better when it's played in sub-sahara so uh cameron being on the southern divide you might think that the sub-saharan countries are probably having a little bit of a boost but you know on uh, the other side each with one in uh burkina faso which or even uh, even angola so it's not a one-to-one -one, so i did not uh, use use that but i think the cameron will have a considerable home field advantage during the tournament they find themselves in the group with Burkina Faso, my other fav favorite team, that's actually the opening game. Cape Verde, uh, who actually I think eliminated Cameron once from World Cup qualifying, or put them at least on the brink. So that is very interesting. Ethiopia, so a uh, very in 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 interest group. Uh, one of the absolute favorites, Senegal, uh, find themselves in Group B. Uh, 
together with you know uh, more also in Guinea is probably the second best team in in this group. Uh, then we have uh, three groups with pretty big uh, top seeds. That's the Group C with Morocco and Ghana, although Ghana is a little bit uh, uh, swaying away. And Comoros is in there for the first time. Gabon, we had them as hosts. So uh, And Aubameyang is also uh, uh, there, at least in the squad, although I think he might not be playing. Group D, heavyweight between Nigeria and Egypt. Egypt actually favored in this group. They're slightly better than Nigeria, but you know, Nigeria might enjoy a little bit of a... Um, since they are neighbors to Kafka camera a little bit of an advantage they also find it interesting Guinea Bissau Portuguese uh, country and Sudan are in there Egypt and Sudan uh, among the founding member founding members of CAF so I was actually quite happy to see Sudan back there then the one group that I already talked that Milan fans will look at the Algeria and Ivory Coast Algeria are one of the two top favorites and they're also the defending champions and they have an unbeaten streak they I think if they go um through the group stage all wins then they have equaled Italy's record so Algeria is doing really 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 well at, at this moment Sierra Leone Equatorial Guinea should be outsiders in this group and then we have uh, another little bit more even group Tunisia Mali Mauritania I'd want to say they already played the three of them in last the last AFCON in one group uh, which was an uh, because these were all outstanding jerseys and Gambia tiny tiny nation uh, English speaking nation in French speaking sense within French speaking sense and I go look 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 it up and like it's just along the Gambia River uh, very very interesting geographically there and also a little bit colonial mess so those are the groups so let's see look into the pro projections how do we expect these groups to go uh, here I mean, we could or 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 CC with with the bars with home 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 home. The Cameron, of course, are big favorites in the group uh, ahead of Burkina Faso, Cape Verde, and Ethiopia. Um, Ethiopia, and you know, most East Africa is not as well known for soccer. Um, which is also to me uh, one of those interesting aspects of Africa that, that it's either Northern Africa or uh, West Africa that are really good. I mean, West F Africa is, as far as I know, uh, the um, genetically most diverse diverse region in the world, as far if I'm not completely mistaken there. But I, th I think uh, that that probably will play a big part in that. Group B, Senegal, towering favorites over Guinea, Zimbabwe, Malawi, uh, probably only for third place. Morocco ahead of Ghana, Gabon and Comoros. Then, as I said, Egypt, a tad ahead of Nigeria at the moment. So this will be a major matchup. Blue looking forward. Uh, Guinea, Bissau and Sudan, maybe. Then Algeria and I Ivory Coast, big favorites there. I think they meet on the last match day where they could then decide who goes in uh, first or second, which we, when we look at that three could potentially be actually a big thing. I think finishing second is not the worst thing there. And then Tunisia ahead of Mali, Gambia, and then more, more, more Martina. I thought, I I want to say Mauritania finished third the last time, the time around. Uh, third place team, you know, this is all expected. This For me, the third place team thing is always a crapshoot in a way. Okay, Verde, Gabon, Gambia and Guinea-Bissau are the ones that I have at the moment, which will lead us to the following three. And here it's all fully projected. So... Uh, Egypt, if they would win D1, they actually, yes, you have Burkina Faso and potentially Ghana. Uh, Morocco could also be in there, but I would expect Morocco finish ahead, ahead, ahead of Ghana. So Egypt actually then probably favored relatively easily to win their branch, I would say. Um, if it would uh, work out with Senegal, uh, a little bit more tougher schedule. Um, not playing a third place team is easy, but then Tunisia, Ivory Coast, yeah, you would be favored over either one of these. Um, but still, it's not uh, it, it's not a straightforward line. However, you see already Ivory Coast. This could also be Algeria, and then we have a replay of the final in the quarterfinals. So uh, that's a big point that I, I, I want to make there. Uh, Cameroon will most definitely be favored in their uh, branch. It is, has been nicely set up for Cameroon, I have to, I have to say. Uh, Gabon, Guinea, Mali, all teams that Cameroon at home should beat and make it to the semis. Uh, everything but straightforward, I think, is Algeria's path. And that, 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 that's what I'm saying. I think for Algeria, it m yes, you might get Senegal, but the way I see their path going, Algeria against Nigeria is a very likely ma matchup. It could also be Algeria, Egypt. I mean, then we get one of the biggest rivalries in Africa. 
Um, and then Morocco against Cape Verde. So we have Algeria then against uh, Morocco. That is also interesting. Neighboring countries. And then you would have to play against Cameroon, the hosts. To be honest, if I'm Algeria, yes, I would look at Senegal. But on the other side, if I'm in that branch, I play rather Egypt in the semis and have a, a better, a, a bigger one there. So for me, Algeria actually received a pretty, pretty tough draw. Um, we can also see that home field advantage is at the moment carrying Cameroon to a third place finish. Whereas projected at the moment, we have a Senegal-Algeria final. Um, Algeria, I think, is the highest rated team ahead of Senegal. Both of these played already last, last, last final, so uh, we, it will be really interesting to see going forward which of these teams will actually come through. But I rate them both very, very, very highly. I would give Algeria a slight edge. They have already won. Uh, Senegal never has won the AFCON. They just always fail at one of the last hurl hurl hurl. So this is a big mental block. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of the Netherlands. Whereas uh, Algeria, I think, been there, done that, uh, and have a very uh, good team. The only thing is that semifinal against potential semifinal against Cameroon is a problem and also as i said it's played in sub-saharan africa uh, as for the overall favorites as you see it's algeria senegal uh morocco uh, cameron but i think algeria senegal a step above the others uh and then you see kind of kind of flat like up until ghana it you would say it's all kind of reasonable changes i mean four percent or less mali burkina Faso, so it goes down and then it uh the teams that they had could win it, uh, win it uh quickly vanish which is something that there's a little bit more of a tale to um to the lower teams in the afcon than we had it for instance at the euros but unlike the euros i gotta say uh if we have the top is much more closer to together. Although I have to say the Euros were very open to our tournament as well. Where do we start? Uh, as I said, it will start on Sunday, January 1st, Cameroon against Burkina Faso in the new stadium in Yaoundé, the Olimba Stadium. Not the old one, that's the Hahiju, which actually will uh, play host to many, many, many games. We It's kind of a double header than Ethiopia, Cape Cape Verde. I think most of the tournament is kind of double headers. It's set up. It's a kind of compressed schedule already on the 10th of January, having uh, four games, then three games, then three games. And this is kind of a rhythm that also goes into the second round. I think a highlight fixture is already on Tuesday, then Nigeria, Egypt. That could be a fun one. So yeah, that was it for me for previewing the AFCON. Uh, as I said, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm gonna shoot a few, uh, I'm gonna shoot a uh, full jersey review. How often can you expect me to talk about it? I have not intended. I don't actually know how much I will be able to watch or how much I will watch. But my intention kinda is to really uh, watch highlight games and maybe give you um, after each match day a little review, but I really gotta see how it works out <laughs> for me uh i would say that in the long no, no, i stage i will get a little bit more into it for sure in any case let me know who are your favorites which african teams do you like will you watch the afcon or will you just ignore it uh give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and i will talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day